In this video, we're going to be going over another way of representing vectors using unit vectors. So let's go over what you know so far about vectors. Uh, we know a vector has magnitude and direction. So the magnitude is its size. And let's say we labeled this vector here A, and let's say we went across um, three, for example, and up two. Okay, maybe this isn't to scale, but you get the idea. Um, then we could also label this vector with a, a column vector. So we could say A equals three, two, like that. So the number on the top is how far you go across in the X direction, and the number on the bottom is how far up or down you go in the Y direction. So that's a column vector. We also know we can add vectors together. So if we had another vector here, it's like B, we could find you know A plus B, that would be the resultant of A plus B, and that might be vector C or something. So we know we can represent vectors using uh, uh, column vectors. We know we can add and subtract vectors. So let's talk about unit vectors then. Uh, so a unit vector is just a vector with uh, a magnitude of one. So its size is one unit, right? That's why we call it a unit vector, pretty straightforward. Uh, but there are two special unit vectors uh, that uh, we use to represent, we can use to represent any 2D vector. Um, so if we draw a set of axes here, this can be the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Uh, we have a special unit vector, which is one unit along the x-axis. So if we draw a vector here to one on the x-axis, uh, this is uh, the vector that is commonly referred to as I. Now you might say, why is it labeled I? That's a, let me do that I again. Why is it labeled I? It's not really important. It's just, we have to label it something and call it I, uh, but it is to do with um, imaginary numbers. Now, if you don't know about imag imaginary numbers, then again, don't worry about it too much, but that's where the I comes from. And the unit vector in the Y direction is labeled J. So the letter after I, of course. Okay, so these two unit vectors we can use to represent uh, any other 2D vector. So this vector we labeled A, we could say is 3i plus 2j. So that was vector A. Um, so this is saying we've gone three lots of the unit vector in the x direction and then two lots of the unit vector in the i direction. Um, now you might say, why bother with this? I'm perfectly happy representing vectors with column vectors. I don't really need this new notation. Well, this is really useful if you want to work with vectors algebraically. Let's say you want to create an equation and add a bunch of vectors or do other, uh, do other things algebraically with those vectors. Um, this is a, a useful way of representing those vectors. And you'll quickly see that once you work with this new notation, uh, actually it is really useful. Okay. so. Um, that's representing vectors using the unit vectors. And let's say we had another vector. Um, let's say B was, um, I don't know, uh, 2i take 4j or something. We can add these two vectors together using this new notation. So we could say A plus B equals uh, 3i plus 2j plus 2i take 4j. And then you add the i components and the j components, and you have your resultant. So 3i plus 2i is 5i, and 2j take 4j is negative 2j. So in this picture, you know, that might be this vector, which we could label c, for example. Okay, so you've just found that resultant using this unit vector notation. Okay, so let's go through uh, a few more problems. So let's say we had two other vectors, let's say A equaled 5i plus 2j and B equaled 3i take 4j. And you might be asked to find uh, 2a take B. Okay, so using what we just went through, we just need to multiply A by two first. So this would look like uh, 2a take B equals two times 5i plus 2j, take 3i take 4j. Now it's important to put the brackets there because that negative is being just distributed to both terms. So then we multiply both numbers uh, by two. So this is 10i plus 4j. 
and then negative 3i plus 4j. So that's negative, negative makes a positive. And then combine like terms. So 10i take 3i is 7i, and 4j plus 4j is 8j. Okay, pretty straightforward stuff, right? Okay, then let's go through another problem. Let's say we had two other vectors, a equals 2i plus 3j, and b equals 3i take j, and we want to find uh, lambda if a plus lambda b is parallel to the vector to the vector i. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, we know the vector i is that unit vector in the positive x direction. Okay, so that's essentially the vector. So we should, I should have wrote this before, i equals one zero and j equals zero one. Um, that's always going to be the case when you're talking about vectors and you talk about i and j, these are the accepted values of i and j, one zero and zero one. Okay, so if we know a plus lambda b is parallel to i, well, let's firstly find a plus b first. Let's just ignore the lambda for a moment. A plus b. Uh, so that's going to be 2i plus 3j plus 3i take j. And then we have 5i uh, plus 2j. Now looking at this resultant, 5i plus 2j, if a plus lambda b is parallel to i, that means the j component of that resultant is zero. Um, so if a vector is you know, parallel to i, essentially it's horizontal, there's no j component there. So we want this component to be zero. How can we make that happen? Well, notice we subtract j when we add b. So if we could subtract three j, we'll end up with zero for the j part of that vector. So then we're going to do a plus three b and see what happens. So we'll have two i plus three j uh, plus three times three i take j. And now we have, uh, let's see, we've got uh, three times three i is nine plus two is 11 i and then three j uh, take 3j is 0. So we just have 11i. That means that lambda is equal to 3. Okay, so that's how you're answering that type of question. Uh, let's do a couple more. So these are some exam style questions. So this one says a equals p negative q, b equals qp, c equals 7, 4. Find, uh, sorry, given that a plus 2b equals c, find the values of p and q. Okay, firstly, we want to find an expression for a plus 2b. Uh, so let's say a plus 2b uh, equals, uh, that would be pi, whoops, pi, because that's the, the number on the top relates to the i vector and the number on the bottom relates to the j vector. So this is pi take qj and then plus two lots of qi uh, plus pj. And this is equal to 7i plus 4j. Okay, now we're going to combine like terms, not focusing on the p's and q's, but the i's and the j's. We want to combine the, the unit vectors, the types of unit vectors. So this will be pi plus 2p, sorry, 2q. I got confused there. So p plus 2qi, that's the i parts of the vectors placed together. And then we've got... 2p, so plus 2p, uh, take q, j. That's the j parts put together. Okay, so let me just highlight those so it's really clear. So these were the i parts, and these were the, what color can I use, purple? These were the j parts that we, and that was multiplied by two. So 2p, take q. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Um, and this is equal to 7i plus 4j. So we're going to equate coefficients. We're going to end up with a simultaneous equations and we're going to be able to solve for p and q. So firstly, p plus 2q equals 7. And then 2p take q equals 4. And now you can solve this 
using your favorite method, either substitution or elimination, I'm going to use substitution. So this equation tells us that P equals seven take two Q. So then we can substitute that into this equation for P. Now let's do that down here. So then we're going to have two times seven take two Q take Q equals four. And then 14 take four Q take Q equals four. And then uh, four take 14 is negative 10, negative four take one is negative five Q equals negative 10. So we get Q equal to two. And then we need to find P. So substitute that value for Q into this equation for P. We get P equal to seven take two times two, which is three. So there we have the values of P and Q. One more question before we finish. This one says the resultant of the vector A equals three I take two J and B P I take two P J is parallel to the vector C equal to two I take three J. Find the value of P at the resultant of vectors A and B. Pretty similar to the previous question. We again are going to end up with some simultaneous equations. So firstly, let's find the resultant. That's essentially just adding A and B. So A plus B is equal to three I take two J plus P I take two B P J. And then this is three plus P I. And we could say negative two plus two P J. So I've substituted the, sorry, uh, factored out the negative one, put that at the front of the brackets. And we know this equals some multiple of C because it's parallel. So we could say it equals K two I take three J. Okay. So then we can say that three plus P equals two K and two plus two P equals negative three K. So uh, expanding those brackets, they would be the coefficients of I and J on the right hand side. So now again, you can solve these simultaneous equations using your favorite method. Again, I'm going to use substitution. So this equation tells us P equals two K take three. And I'm going to plug that in for the P down here. So then we get two plus two times two K take three equal to negative three K. And actually let me take a step back. I've made a mistake because this negative was here in the middle. Uh, essentially we'd have two plus two P equal to three, not negative three. Sorry for that error there. So because that negative is already there, um, you know, essentially they cancel out. Okay, so we have two plus two P equal to three K, not negative three K. Okay, and then, so expand those brackets. We have two plus four uh, K take 12, whoops, six, sorry. A few mistakes in this video, sorry about that. And then uh, we could subtract three K from the left-hand side. So we get K equal to four. So K equals four, now we can find P. P is equal to eight take three, substituting it in there for, uh, K and then we have P equal to five. So we have the value of P, then we can find A plus B by substituting this value for P into our equation here. So A plus B equals three plus five I. Again, looking at this P here, substituting five for that. Uh, take two plus two times five J. Okay, then we have eight I take two plus 10 is 12. J. Okay, so that is a few questions on uh, unit vectors. Hope you found that useful. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward topic, I think, just kind of learning a new way of representing vectors uh, that turns out to be really useful uh, as you learn more and more about vectors. Okay, so hope you found that video useful. Please leave a like if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.